guys, it's Todd from Like-Minded Lunatics bringing you, yeah, it's another drink place swear. hey, it's all we do around here. I mean, besides spending our entire lives trying to figure out what a man is, it's all we've ever really done around here. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Drink Place Swear, and welcome back to Like-Minded Lunatics. You know that Like-Minded Lunatics is not just me here at Drink Place Swear. No, it's not. It's also Mark Gifford, the co-founder of LML. He does the Friday night videos, and if you're not checking out those, then you're missing the best part on the channel. I think the best part uh, on YouTube, the best part of YouTube, that is. Bang! Please check out the Friday night videos. A great playlist there, a ton of stuff to look at. And bang! If you're happy with what what you see here, either on Friday Night Videos, Drink Place Swear, or on a number of uh, any of the playlists that you see around here. I'm going to stumble all day. You don't expect perfection. If you want perfection, go someplace else, friend. Okay, bang. Uh, please hit that subscribe button if you want to. Okay, I hope you do. I'm glad you're here. What do we do here at Drink Place Swear? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. We play a game, usually a classic one. I pair it with a beverage. I do. And then I tend to tell a story. What are we playing here today? I'm excited about this one. 1985's Rad Racer. What? You go, what's Rad Racer, Todd? This is a black box game from the NES. That's right. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. What are we pairing it with today? Well, this is a Jim Beam and Coke. Huge surprise. Get yourself something. Let's kick back and have a nice time together. Okay? Good. Mm -hmm. That's ice cold refreshment. My, my ice did melt while I was uh, getting started here. Um, but it's, it's good. Don't worry. Get yourself something. Is your beverage okay? Let me see what you got. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I like that. Ooh. Okay, sorry. Uh, this is Rad Racer. A black box game is one of the first uh, games to be released on the NES because early on, the box that the cartridge would come in all had kind of a uniform look. And they were all black with like a little square window uh, that showed what the game looked like. And uh, so they call those black box games. Rad Racer is one of those. Let's get started. Okay, it's clear that A is the gas pedal, and I assume B is the brake, so hopefully I don't have too much trouble here. Let's get started and have some fun in Rad Racer, yeah? What do we want to get into in terms of the story today? Well, I'm going, I don't know, thoughtful today. You know, sometimes my stories are like kind of jackassery, and sometimes they're like, I don't know, like sort of trying to be more thoughtful. I want to walk through a difficult concept today. I really do. And by difficult, I mean that I don't quite know exactly what to do with it. That is a word, okay? And that word is man or manhood, to be more specific, okay? Uh, what does it mean to be a man and when do you become a man? This is the kind of question I want to ask today. Uh, if you are a person on YouTube who likes to put in the comments, I, I invite those kind of things today, although I don't normally do it, because I'm curious. And here's why I'm curious. Every culture, uh, even going as far back as we have in recorded human history, has spent time uh, sort of commemorating or marking when adults become adults. Yeah, whether they're men or women. And um, I think that it was a lot clearer um, some years ago when that moment happened. If you look at ancient, you know, uh, the Jewish tradition, right? The bar mitzvah or the bat mitzvah. This was a moment in time that you commemorated becoming either a man or woman. And you, what, supposedly came out of this ceremony a somewhat changed person. And I think about that. And I wonder, could we benefit uh, in modern American culture uh, if we aren't Jewish or we aren't a part of one of these uh, what Native American traditions or African traditions or whomever else has done it? If we're not a part of those traditions, could we benefit from those? Um, because I got to tell you, um, I have spent my entire life, and you can see, I got I got naturally silver hair. I, I'm I'm a 
I'm a gray-haired dude with a beard, so you might look at me and say, this guy's obviously a man. Yeah. And I, I am not talking about uh, my sex, because, of course, sex and gender are different things, right? We understand that. I only mention it because I hear politicians get this wrong all the time. So let's just be, let's be clear when we say sex is biology, yeah, and gender is construct. Okay, so I am a cisgendered dude, so I identify as man, and my biology is man, so it's not real complicated for me. And so... Given my personal experience, that's how I'm going to kind of talk about it. But I do want to acknowledge that I am open to, uh, you know, other ways of talking about it. Yeah. So anyway, in modern culture, guys, yeah, don't really have a way of um, marking when they become men or when they become adults. Now, everybody's got their own ideas. You could say, oh, well, that's uh, puberty. That, that pu when, when puberty happens, that's what we say a lot of times for women, right? They become a woman, meaning that they're capable of a reproduction, yeah? And uh, in, the, in past generations, you know, especially hundreds of years ago, uh, young women uh, at puberty were ma even married off, right? These days we think of becoming a man as like something that happens later. And maybe that's uh, because of life expectancy, or maybe that's because we are um, childish. I don't know. But I will tell you, you know, like uh, at the time of puberty, what, what are we talking, 12 years old for, for a lot of people? Uh, I did not feel like an adult. No, I don't know how to wash my own clothes. I mean, I can read well and I can wipe my own ass, but like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I didn't know how to boil water. I'm not, I'm not a man. And see, this is what I'm going to say. Is now it becomes unclear to me what that means. So let's talk about the possibilities here. When does someone become a man? And and of course I'm I'm simultaneously talking about what it, what it means to become an adult woman. But I, I I can only speak from personal experience, and so I'll be using man. But I do invite people to think about you know womanhood in a similar way. Maybe you say it's turning 18, uh, being able to vote, graduating high school, going off to college. Maybe that's when you become an adult because you're possibly moving away from home for the first time. Even if you don't go to college and you decide to start working, you buy a car, you get a job, you get your own place, that seems possibly like, you know, you're an adult. But I gotta say, I did go to college and hung out with a lot of college dudes. These dudes are not adults by any definition of the word, except that they can make their own macaroni and cheese, and they know how to set an alarm, right? So what am I saying, I guess, when I try to define the word man or the word adult and make these jokes about uh, the childishness of men? Well... At early stages, I'm talking about not knowing how to do stuff, right? Not having autonomy. But of course, as you get older, it also means maybe perhaps not knowing how to be a gentleman, right? Like not knowing how to uh, treat uh, folks of the opposite sex or the opposite gender. And maybe there's so much going on in this conversation that it's impossible to objectively come to a determination as a culture. I mean, maybe we're so varied as a culture, it's not going to be able to happen. Okay, it's possible. But I want to share a personal experience like I like to do on here um, about my adulthood or about my manhood. And that is, no, I'm not telling sex stories. Don't worry about it. Yeah. You wish, brother. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so you know, one of them is this, and I, I'm going to get serious here for, for a minute. When my uh, mom died, I was uh, 28 years old, I think. And um, I was in charge of uh, everything to, to wrap up um, her the, the end of her life. And one of those duties was to give the eulogy. Okay. And I got up in front of a church of about 200 people and uh, said goodbye. 
and uh, had written the speech and said goodbye, right? And afterwards, I heard very kind words from very, you know, some family members about how they thought it went and that they thought it was, uh, you know, that I did a good job. But I heard from one of my cousins, not like my lunatic Ricky, but one of my other cousins, uh, that um, when they heard the eulogy, they felt like our generation, because this cousin and I are sort of the same age. He said that we became adults in that moment. That he felt like an adult for the first time in his life. Even though he was married himself, had kids, and all of that, watching me give the eulogy for my mother made him feel like we all just grew up. Huh. It's interesting. I kind of like that. Not that I liked having to do it or go through it. But I liked the concept that, like, um, going through a specific something uh, earns you the right call yourself an adult or to call yourself a man. When my dad passed away about five years later, I had a a different family member. My brother-in-law approach me and say, uh, he hugged me uh, about the loss of my father. And he said, Todd, I hate to do this, but I need to welcome you to the orphans club meaning I was now someone who didn't have any parents at all. And I think I really, truly felt like an adult or like a man at that moment. And what I mean is that I didn't have any parents to go to, to um, talk to about a skinned knee or about some personal tragedy. And I didn't have them to go to, to talk about how proud I was of an accomplishment, that that was just mine for me. Interesting. Now, I don't know what that is for you, but I think it is important and appropriate in today's culture uh, to consider those things, not just in what it means to be uh, a man or a woman in terms of physical development or age, but also in what it means to be a good adult, (laughs) you know? Um. Because I do feel like I could have benefited from some, you know, damn ceremony. Just to tell me, all right, Todd, uh, you're a man now, so get it together. Oh, I got to get it together now? Yeah, you got to get it together. All right. (laughs) Well, thanks for being here with us while I play Rad Racer. You know what? I don't always feel like I have it together, but I'm going to try to get it together. I hope you're doing well. And I got a lot of beverage left, as I always say. But in between now and the next time I talk to you, I'm T. Rizzy, man, question mark. Man, drink whiskey. See ya.